We're at lesson 4.1b and we're going to talk about finding unit rates. A rate is a ratio that compares two quantities measured in different units. We have a rate of 20 miles in half hour. We're comparing distance and time. A unit rate is a rate in which the second quantity in the comparison is one unit. We have 40 miles in one hour. Our unit rate is 40 over 1. Rates are often expressed as unit rates with a denominator of 1 unit. If we see 80 miles in 2 hours, we can divide by 2 for the numerator and denominator so that our denominator is a 1. We get 40 miles in 1 hour. We're comparing the distance traveled to the amount of time it took to go that distance with one unit. So a ratio, well, that's comparing quantities of the same type of units, like 50 miles to 30 miles. We're doing a distance to a distance. We could write it as 50 to 30 or 50 over 30. A rate is comparing quantities of different units, 50 miles in one hour, that's distance to time. When the two quantities being compared are both fractions, the rate is expressed as a complex fraction. A complex fraction has a fraction as its numerator, denominator, or both. They're also called compound fractions. So this is a complex fraction or a compound fraction. It has a fraction for its numerator and denominator. We know this represents division, so we have one-half divided by one-third. If we have one-half mile in one-third of an hour, we can write it as a complex fraction and do one-half divided by one-third. That's going to be equal to one-half times a 3 over a 1 because we multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. Multiplying straight across, we get 3 over 2. We can simplify that to 1 and 1 half. So we know they can go 1 and a half miles in 1 hour. Walking on our treadmill, Sarah counts 52 steps every half minute. How many steps does Sarah walk every minute? Now you might be able to solve this with mental math just in your head. If you know a half minute is 52 steps, well then you can figure out what a whole minute would be. But I used this easy problem to show you the steps. We determine the units of the rate. The rate is the steps walked per time in minutes. We find Sarah's rate of walking in steps per time her steps walked is 52, the time is half minute. We have the steps walked over the time. So we're going to do the steps walk divided by the time. We do 52 steps divided by half minute. We find Sarah's unit rate. We have 52 divided by one half. We can write the 52 over a 1 and we multiply by the reciprocal of this divisor, one half, so it's going to be 2 over 1. We multiply straight across. We have 104 steps in one minute. So the unit rate is 104 steps per minute. We can check our answer. We have 104 steps in one minute. We can divide the 104 by 2 and the minute by 2 and get 52 steps in half minute. These rates are equivalent because we divided the numerator and denominator by the, of the unit rate by the same value 2, and it equals the original rate of 52 steps in half minute. They're in proportion to each other. Each of these are in proportion to each other. And do you remember from 6th grade math, chapter 7, we learned about proportions? Proportion is an equation that states that two ratios are equivalent. Per, for every, for each can all be used to describe rates. When we write a rate as a fraction, the quantity that comes after one of these phrases will go in the denominator. 
if we have two slices of pizza for each person, well, person's going to be the denominator. We have two slices for one person, for each person. $24 profit for every two bracelets sold. Well, the bracelet sold is the denominator. We have a $24 profit over the two sold. 50 miles per hour, the hour is going to be in the denominator. We have 50 miles in one hour. Take a look at this picture of batteries and this picture. These are Duracell Copper Top AA batteries, and it says you can get a 16 count for $16. This one says you can get the same Duracell Copper Top AA batteries of four count for $4.25. So which package of batteries is the better deal? We can find and compare their unit rates. We can find out how much it costs for one battery. For this one, we get $16 for the price and we get 16 batteries. We're going to compare it to a $4.25 price for four batteries. Well, this comes out to be one dollar for the price for one battery, and this comes out as one dollar six cents for the price for one battery. We can do four dollars and twenty-five cents divided by four, and because we're dealing with money, this two tells the six to stay the same, and we just don't put it on there because in money we have two place values, don't we, for the cents? So it rounds to a dollar six for one battery. So here, our unit rate is one dollar for one battery, and here it's one dollar six cents for one battery. That means we can save six cents per battery by buying the 16 count package. We don't pay as much for each battery. The unit rate is less expensive. This says Bob can eat one half of a large pizza in one fourth hour. So how much pizza can Bob eat per hour? We can get some scratch paper and we can make a table for pizza and the times for hours. We know he can eat half of a pizza in one fourth hour and we can complete the table. We do one half times two. That gives us a two over two. And we can do one half times three. It's this one half times three, the numerator. That's going to give us three over two, three halves. And if we do one half times four, that's going to give us four halves. So notice the fractions in this top table are not simplified and have the same denominator for the time. See that? So we can make a finished table and we can have all of our fractions simplified instead of two halves and two fourths, we can have a one and a one half. Instead of three halves and three fourths, we have a one and a half and a three fourths. Instead of four halves and four fourths, we can have a two and a one. That means Bob can eat two pizzas per hour. By using the same denominator for time on our scratch paper table, we can multiply one half by each numerator of time to find the quantity of pizza. Then we can make a finished table with simplified fractions. If you go to a grocery store and look at the labeling on the shelves underneath the products, you'll see it says price per ounce or price per pound, and it tells you the unit rates for the items they're selling. Our next lesson is going to be 4.1c, we finished this one, and we're going to be using unit rates. Knowing how to find a unit rate is very helpful in everyday life, especially when you're purchasing things, when you're shopping at a grocery store. Have a wonderful day and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye!